Did you know that the standard remove algorithm doesn't actually remove anything? Welcome to this Bits of Q series on algorithms from the standard library, where today we will be talking about the remove and replace algorithms, including their remove and replace copy variants. Let's get started. Just like most standard library algorithms, the remove algorithm works on a range which is specified through the use of iterators. For example, say I have this container A with eight elements, I could use a.begin for the beginning of my range and a.begin plus 5 for the end to remove elements from among the first five elements in the container. Because, as always when specifying ranges using iterators, the end iterator is one past the last element in the range. As a third argument, the remove algorithm takes the value that should be removed, in this case, 2. And now for the confusing part. As I already said at the start, the standard remove algorithm does not actually remove elements. Instead, it is going to scan through the range, and every time it encounters an element with the value 2, it will repeatedly swap it with its consecutive elements to move it all the way to the end of the range. So in our case, the algorithm starts at 1. That's not what we're looking for, so it continues to find a 2. This element matches the value that was passed to the remove algorithm, so it will now start moving it to the back by repeatedly swapping it with consecutive elements. These swaps will use move operations when available. For our integer example, this is not the case, but if you, for example, have a container of strings, these move operations will save a lot of time compared to copying the strings. Once the element has reached the back, the algorithm moves the end iterator one back, essentially excluding the removed element from the range on which it operates. It then goes back to checking the iterator that now points at 3, and this process repeats itself until the start and end iterators meet. At this point, it returns the new end iterator. The original begin iterator and the new end iterator now specify the range of elements that remain after removing all the twos. The new end and the old end iterator specify the range of elements that were removed and can hence be passed to an erase function to remove them from the underlying container. This practice of using the output of the remove algorithm as an input for calling the erase function is called the erase remove idiom. You'll often see it used something like this. Given a container, in this case, the vector of strings called words, we want to remove all occurrences of the word high. So we call erase on the container. Erase takes the range that should be erased as input. For the begin iterator, we'll use the new end iterator returned by a call to remove on the whole container. So that's words.begin to words.end, looking for the value high to remove, which again means move to beyond the new end iterator. And as end iterator of our erase call, we pass the end of the words container. Two lines of code to efficiently remove all occurrences of high from a container. It even uses move operations to avoid expensive string copies. Quite a powerful combination of standard library algorithms. But what if you don't want to remove a fixed value, like the number 2 or the string high, but instead want to use a function to determine whether an element should be removed? For those cases, we have the std remove if algorithm. It works exactly the same as the normal remove algorithm. It also uses iterators to indicate the range on which it should operate. But now, as a third parameter, it takes a predicate to determine whether to remove an element. We could, for example, use a lambda like this to remove all elements greater than 2. If you watched the previous episode on the copy algorithms, you might remember that there we also had a copy if which accepted a predicate and acted as a conditional copy. Having an underscore if variant is a common pattern among the algorithms of the standard library, which we'll see more in this series. If you have a read-only container, where you expect that almost all elements will be removed, it might be better to consider the remove copy or remove copy if algorithm. The remove copy algorithms also take an output iterator as a parameter and will copy elements that do not match the value or predicate to this output iterator. In this way, they can be used to fill a new container with only the elements that would remain if you would apply the erase remove idiom to the input container. Of course, you don't need to output to a container. That's the beauty of using iterators. We can also use std remove copy if with an OStream iterator to simply output all elements in A that are greater than 2 to the standard output. If you're not familiar with the OStream iterator, you should check out my video on iterator adapters after finishing this video. I'll leave a link in the description. The second set of algorithms I want to discuss today are the replace algorithms. They follow a similar pattern to the remove algorithms. They take a begin and an end iterator to specify the range on which they should operate. 
and a value for replace or a predicate for replace if to identify the elements that should be replaced. In contrast to the remove algorithm, we have one extra parameter, namely the new value that should replace the elements matching the predicate. If I now bring back my trusty container A, I can use a call to replace if to easily replace any element with a value greater than 2 with a 0. If you do not want to replace elements with a fixed value, but instead want to use a function that determines what to replace it with based on the element itself, you should probably have a look at the std transform algorithm, which I'll treat in a future episode. Just like the remove algorithm, the replace algorithms also have an underscore copy variant, which, like the remove counterparts, writes to an output iterator. Replace copy and replace copy if write the values that would result from using the replace and replace if algorithms. As such, they are good alternatives if you have a read-only container as input. That's it for this episode. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.